Welcome to uh, a deep dive, you know, into a really fascinating event, the War of the Worlds radio broadcast of 1938. It's just a story that I think really captures just the incredible power of media, storytelling, and even our own imaginations. Yeah, it really is a landmark event in media history. Thinking back to Halloween Eve 1938, families are gathered around their radios expecting an evening of music, and they were met with something entirely different, breaking news bulletins announcing a Martian invasion. It's wild to think that, you know, well, most people today know that this was a fictional story. Back then, the lines between what was real and what wasn't got incredibly blurred. So today we're going to explore how Orson Welles, this young theatrical prodigy, created such a convincing illusion and what impact it had on American society. You know, the fact that Welles was only 23 at the time makes it even more amazing. He was born in 1915 and had already made his stage debut in Ireland by the time he was 16. Wow, a true prodigy. So he was already making a name for himself in the theater world when he took on this radio project. Absolutely. By his early 20s, Wells was already shaking things up in New York theater with innovative productions like an all-black Macbeth and a modern, politically charged Julius Caesar. So this wasn't just some amateur hour radio play. This was a guy who knew how to create drama and captivate an audience. It seems like that theatrical background would have been crucial to the success of War of the Worlds. Oh, definitely. Now, you might be wondering what exactly was the War of the Worlds. It was a radio adaptation of H.G. Wells' science fiction novel, aired on CBS Radio on October 30th, 1938. And as you mentioned, it was directed and narrated by Orson Welles himself. And this is where it gets really interesting, right? Because they managed to make this fictional invasion sound incredibly real even though they were working with the limited technology of radio at the time. Exactly. Wells and his team were masters at creating an immersive audio experience. One of the key things they did was present the story as a series of simulated news bulletins, interrupting regular programming. So it would have sounded just like how real breaking news would have been delivered back then. I bet that instantly grabbed people's attention. It would have. They understood how to grab the listener's attention immediately and then build suspense gradually. The broadcast didn't just jump right into the alien invasion. It started slowly with reports of strange explosions on Mars, gradually building the tension and drawing listeners in. It's so clever. It's like slowly turning up the heat on a stove until the water boils. You don't even realize how hot it's gotten until it's too late. That's a great analogy. As the story progressed, the reports became more frequent and urgent, detailing the Martian landings and their terrifying heat rays. And I bet those sound effects they used really brought the whole thing to life. Oh, absolutely. They used such realistic sound effects for everything. Imagine the chilling sounds of alien heat rays, the crashing of Martian cylinders, and the sounds of cities being destroyed, all brought to life through the magic of radio. It must have been utterly terrifying to listen to especially in a time when radio was such a trusted source of information. I remember reading somewhere that they even modeled some of their acting on real-life news events. Yes. They had actors playing reporters and officials. And they used very naturalistic dialogue to add to the authenticity. One of the actors, Frank Reddick, who played a reporter in the broadcast, actually studied recordings of Herbert Morrison's report of the Hindenburg disaster. You know, the famous, oh, the humanity broadcast. Wow, that's dedication to realism. It's no wonder people found the broadcast so convincing. That attention to detail really paid off. The way they used music also played a big role in creating that sense of unease. They'd play long stretches of seemingly innocent dance music hmm. and then abruptly cut to those terrifying news bulletins. I can only imagine the feeling of being lulled into a sense of normalcy and then bam, aliens are attacking. It's brilliant from a storytelling perspective. But they used other types of music too, right? Not just upbeat dance music. Mm, yes, you're right. Even the emergency fill-in music they used added to the unsettling atmosphere. They chose solo piano pieces by Debussy and Chopin, which, while beautiful, added to the sense of something ominous unfolding. It's fascinating how music can be used to set a mood. But all of these techniques, the news bulletins, the pacing, the sound, affects the music. It really makes you wonder how the American public reacted. Well, we've all heard the stories about people panicking, fleeing their homes, even mistaking water towers for Martian spaceships. But was the reaction really as widespread and chaotic as the legend suggests? It's interesting, isn't it? The newspapers at the time certainly painted a picture of mass hysteria. However, later research suggests the panic might have been a bit exaggerated. It seems like less than a third of the listeners who were frightened actually believed it was a real alien invasion. Wow, that's a much smaller number than I would have expected. So what were the other people thinking? If they weren't terrified of aliens, yeah. what were they afraid of? 
Many mistook it for reports of a German invasion, which, given the rising tensions in Europe at the time, wouldn't have been entirely outlandish. Others thought it was a natural disaster of some sort. Remember, this was before the days of instant fact-checking and widespread access to information. Right, so people were relying solely on what they heard on the radio. No internet, no smartphones, no social media to quickly verify the information or see what others were saying. That makes a huge difference. It does. The power of radio in 1938 can't be overstated. It was the primary source of news and entertainment for a vast majority of Americans. It was their lifeline to the outside world, especially in rural areas where news traveled slower. So when a trusted source like radio delivered such shocking news, it's understandable that some people reacted with fear and confusion. It makes you realize how much the media landscape has changed since then. Today, we're bombarded with information from all sides. It's almost impossible to imagine a single broadcast having that kind of impact on society now. It really is a different world. I think it's safe to say that a similar broadcast today wouldn't cause the same level of panic. Our access to information and our media literacy have evolved significantly since 1938. And wouldn't people immediately jump on their phones and start fact-checking if they heard something that unbelievable on the radio? Absolutely. One of the key differences between 1938 and now is our access to instant information. If a radio station announced an alien invasion today, you can bet people would be on their phones immediately, looking for confirmation or debunking from other news sources, social media, you name it. We are constantly bombarded with information from all sides. Mm -hmm. Cable news, streaming services, social media. It's almost impossible for one single story to capture everyone's attention in the same way that the War of the Worlds did back then. Right. Our media landscape is incredibly fragmented compared to what it was in 1938. Back then, if you were listening to the radio, chances are your neighbors were tuned into the same station. That shared experience really amplified the impact of the broadcast. Today, we have so many different sources of information and entertainment. It's hard for any one event to hold the spotlight for very long in our 24-7 news cycle. And even if a shocking story did break through the noise, our ability to verify information quickly would likely prevent mass panic. Think about it. If something unbelievable happened, we wouldn't solely rely on one radio broadcast for information. We'd be checking news websites, texting friends, getting multiple perspectives instantly. Plus, there are official emergency alert systems in place now. If there was a real threat, we'd probably get a notification on our phones immediately. Exactly. That would help to counteract any misinformation circulating on less official channels. But beyond those practical considerations, there's also a cultural shift in how we perceive information. In 1938, radio was still a relatively new medium, and people placed a lot of trust in it. Today, I think we're a bit more skeptical, especially after years of fake news and clickbait headlines. We've learned to question what we see and hear, especially online. You're right. We've developed a healthy dose of skepticism when it comes to consuming information. We're more media savvy now. We understand how media can be manipulated. So while the War of the Worlds might not have the same impact today, it seems like it's still a valuable case study in media literacy and critical thinking, right? Absolutely. It reminds us that even in our information-saturated world, it's crucial to be discerning about the information we consume. So we might not fall for an alien invasion hoax today, but there are still plenty of other ways we can be misled or manipulated by the media. It's a good reminder to always be questioning and evaluating the information we encounter. It's amazing to think that even with all the changes in our media landscape, the lessons of War of the Worlds are still so relevant. It really highlights how powerful a well-crafted story can be, especially when it taps into our deepest fears and anxieties. You're absolutely right. The incident wasn't just about Martians and spaceships. It was about the power of storytelling and the influence media can have on our perceptions of reality, the human tendency to believe what we're told, especially when it's delivered with conviction is as strong today as it was back then. Mm. It's like Wells and his team cracked the code of how to use media to create a truly immersive and believable experience. Right. They didn't just read the book on the air. They transformed it into a living, breathing event using sound effects, music acting, and pacing, all to blur the lines between fiction and reality. And they achieved all that with the limited technology they had back then. It's a testament to their ingenuity and creativity. They were true pioneers in pushing the boundaries of what radio as a medium could do. It's almost like they accidentally stumbled upon a powerful formula for captivating an audience. It makes you wonder, though, if part of the reason the broadcast was so effective hmm. was because it reflected real anxieties of the time. That's a great point. The world was on the brink of war. 
and there was a lot of fear and uncertainty in the air. The idea of an invasion, even by fictional Martians, probably resonated deeply with people who were already feeling vulnerable and anxious. So it wasn't just the technical brilliance of the broadcast, but also the way it tapped into the collective psyche of the nation. The War of the Worlds became an outlet for those anxieties even if people didn't consciously realize it. Exactly. It's a reminder that even the most outlandish stories can reveal something profound about our cultural moment, about the fears and hopes that shape our understanding of the world. It makes you wonder what stories we tell today, even those that seem far-fetched or sensational. What might be revealing about our own cultural anxieties? What are the narratives that grip us the most? And what do they say about our deepest fears and aspirations? That's something for all of us to consider as we navigate the ever-evolving world of media and information. The War of the Worlds might be a relic of the past, but its lessons about the power of storytelling, the influence of media, and the importance of critical thinking are as relevant as ever. So while we may not fall for a Martian invasion hoax today, the War of the Worlds stands as a powerful reminder to be discerning about what we consume to question our sources, and to cultivate a healthy skepticism as we navigate the complex world of media and information. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the War of the Worlds. 